Hi everybody, my name is Gene Jolly. I'm president of Musician's Friend. I'm here with my good friend Jim Diodero today, lifelong musician, string maker, and founder of the Diodero company that you know and love uh, since 1974. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Jim Diodero. I'm the CEO of uh, Diodero & Company. Um, it's, it's nice to call me the founder, but I, it's, it's always been a family business and there's been lots of family members involved. Um, it's an interesting story. My family's been making strings. We traced way back to 1680 in a little town called Sali, Italy. The Eno Mari family, La Bella Strings comes from that town. Galli family in Naples comes from that town. There's another little string maker still around called Durazio. So there were four families that came from that little area and all making strings and still making them today. My granddad came here in uh, early 1900s. He started importing strings because there was a shortage of violin strings um, in America. And he started importing from his relatives in Italy. Uh, one of his uh, relatives had come here and actually taught him the craft of making strings. And he began to make his own strings around 1917, 18. And that always was the trade of our family from that point on. And it was a tiny little business in the basement of my grandmother's house. Uh, my dad joined him in the 30s and it was then called C. Daddario and Son. And the guitar was starting to get popular in the 30s as a big band rhythm instrument. Of course, it was a it was big bluegrass instrument as well. And my dad got interested in, in branching out and not just making violin strings. He started experimenting, making guitar strings. He was fortunate to befriend John D'Angelico. John really liked my dad. John had a tremendous ear. My dad was a curious guy. They started experimenting, and one of the first things they discovered was, well, just making the cores thinner and the wrap wires thicker. They innovated and they got a much louder bass and a bigger bottom to the string. And my dad went on to grow the guitar string business significantly. Of course, you know, in the 50s, Elvis Presley came along, Buddy Holly, you know, electric guitar started getting popular. And then the Beatles hit and that was, you know, that just made us not even pay attention to violin strings for a while because the guitar was, you couldn't make enough guitar strings. And my dad had started a company in 1959 with two other gentlemen from Italy, same area. He, he took them in as partners and my brother John, so they were 25% each partners of a company called Darko Music Strings. And he made all of the strings for D'Angelico. He made all the strings for Dan Electro. In fact, the round wound Dan Electro string, that bright sounding the string. John Entwistle famous John Entwistle's The famous string that John Entwistle liked was a string my dad developed. So then my dad, was making strings for Martin, and uh, they didn't have their own string company. And many other companies, Guild, Gretsch, even some Fender strings in the 50s. And in uh, 1959, the business grew. He moved out of the family home and into a small loft in Queens, and it grew. And in 1969, he sold the company to Martin Guitars. And it was kind of a stock deal, and we worked there for five years. I wasn't a stockholder and I didn't have a contract and I got a little bored with it and left early. I had actually created their in-plant printing operation to print better packaging because the, the envelopes were difficult to print and I got a nice little business going. So we started this company, my wife and I essentially, as a printing company in 1974, February 1st, I didn't 1974. Know that. So, this, so the printing started and advertising. as a printing company. Yes. And, and in fact, uh, Ernie Ball himself called my brother and said, who's printing your envelopes? And my brother John said, well, my brother Jim does that. And uh, gave him my number in Limbrook and, and Ernie sent me uh, some artwork uh, for an O10 plain steel. He said, well, print me a couple of thousand samples. And I did, and I sent them out to him and I, and I didn't hear from him for two weeks. And I went to pick up the mail and open it up and they're opening up as an order for 600,000 envelopes. So for many years, we printed envelopes for Ernie Ball. And, uh, and now you're fierce competitors. Yeah, yeah, but now we're competitors. At Martin, I had a unique opportunity. I called on all of the retailers in the metropolitan area. I was their rep. So I got to see what stores needed. It was interesting to me that strings were hidden in drawers. Nobody showed any merchandise, accessories. You had to ask for it them. It started in retail in 75. We used to put all the strings in cold bins. Yeah, the, everything was hid, hidden. Hid the package. Everything was hidden, and you know, that just sparked yeah. you know, my imagination to think that you know, if we put the stuff out, we'd probably sell more. So then when we decided to start over, as the Dario strings in 1974, my brother and my father came and joined us. We immediately just went out as the Dario strings 
and we had some very handsome looking packaging and advertising from the get-go because we had learned so much. Mm -hmm. It's 40 years this year. 40th year that the brand Dario hit the market and we sold the first Dario strings in August of 74. Thanks everybody for being here today. Westlake Village, California, Musician's Friend.